I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Wednesday prayer service. We we'll read from the book of Micah, chapter 4. The Bible says, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And people shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. We shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, the Lord shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Father, may you bless the service today. Help us, Lord, as we gather from our respective homes. Oh, God to pray together, to worship you, to praise you, to hear your word. We pray for your presence, O oh God, for you are not limited. You are able to reach us wherever we are and to be with us, O oh God. And to unite us in the spirit so that, Lord, we can praise you. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
sacrifice I will serve no other God say Father, we worship you, we praise you, we exalt your holy and great mighty name. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to gather together and to worship you and to praise you and to exalt you and to glorify your mighty name. We pray for your presence, mm. oh God, in this place. May you guide us, may you direct us, oh God, as we call upon your holy name. May the spirit, oh Jehovah God, the unction that only the spirit of God can give. We receive it from you, O Lord, our God. We thank you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. I want us to pray as we pray uh, today, as we read from the book of Micah chapter 3, uh, our focus this week has been praying on the seven mountains. I want us to continue on the same. Uh, the Bible says, it shall come to pass in the latter days, and I believe that we are in the latter days, that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established on the top of the mountains, that the house of the Lord will be established on, the, on, on the every other mountain. I want us to pray for the church because the church, the Bible says, is the pillar and the ground of truth. As God's the, God's the church, so goes the nation. I want us to pray that God will help us to up our game, that we won't be serious with him, that we won't be serious to serve the Lord with utter dedication, that we won't be serious, hallelujah, to follow the Lord and to obey him in every way as a church and that we will not compromise our salvation, neither the position of authority that God has given over the nation, the prophetic voice that God has given over the nation, that we will not compromise it for anything. So I want us to go before the Lord and pray for the mountain of the house of the Lord to be established 
on top of every other mountain. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ. Makila zoto lori ala mahenda. Chata kazendo koriba iladesi ata. Mosha katela zendo orotari elanda bazen. Oh, Kayala Bahanda Hazika Takayala Bahande, the mountain of the house of the Lord. In the latter days, oh God, the days that we are in, you say it shall be established on top of every other mountain. We pray, oh God, that we are the people, that we are the generation, oh God, that you are going to use to make a difference, oh Lord our God. That we are the people, oh Jehovah God. May thy grow, may thy spirit, oh God, be upon us, my Father. May we be a power from above, oh Lord our God. May we be filled with the spirit, oh God, of wisdom, of understanding, of counsel, of the fear of God. We pray, oh God of Mary, that we will not be a lukewarm church. We will not be a church, oh God, that only comes to church on Sunday, that only meets on Sunday. And we will not be a church, oh Lord, our God, that cannot, oh God, stand on your behalf. That we will be a church on fire, a church on fire, oh Lord, a fire that is not strange. Father, that fire that comes from above. Oh God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, our God, we seek your forgiveness, oh God, where we have acted contrary to your purposes, oh God, where we have compromised and we brought your name to disrepute, oh God. We bring repentance, we bring repentance, oh God, in the name of Jesus, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Come upon us, my Father. Come upon us, oh Jehovah God, and cause us to be strong and to stand for you, oh Lord our God. In the name of Jesus, the church may arise, that your people may arise, that the revelation of the sons of God may be seen in the nations, oh God of the world, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Kenya, oh God, in Africa, in Europe, in America, in Australia, in Asia, everywhere. Oh God, and the power of God. In the church, oh Lord our God. And in the church, rise my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, may every other mountain, oh God, be brought down. Oh Jehovah God, to where it ought to be. Under the feet, under the feet, oh God. For the heart is yours. Hallelujah. The heaven is yours and the heart is your footstool. Mighty God. We call on your name. We call on your name. Oh God, raise our prayer. Honor us to pray that God will release a spirit of prayer and supplication upon us. That we will pray. We will pray everywhere. We will pray when we gather in church. We will pray in our homes. We will pray as we travel. We will pray in our offices. We will pray in the parks. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will pray without ceasing. The pray, the, the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon us that the church will not be intimidated by the circumstances that are around. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Makila Labashenda Lamazenda, Jesus calls us to arise. Hallelujah! Baptizes, oh God, the spirit of prayer and supplication. May we become a praying church. Church. May we become a praying church. May we become a church that calls upon your holy name. They say, Oh Lord our God, in your word. And when they are gathered together, they prayed in the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God. Boldly, oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus that the word of God shall go forth from the pulpit. Oh God of every congregation with the power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus to cut out some men and to bring down the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, they are saying that politician now will be going to churches. Will be going to churches because they have no forums to campaign. But I want us to pray that men of God will be faithful to God. 
to declare the word of God as it should be, as it, 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 it ought to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Hallelujah. That they will be anointed. Hallelujah. Not to be afraid. Not to be men pleasers. In the name of Jesus Christ. But to declare. Hallelujah. The counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. That we will not be directed by politicians. Oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will hear the voice, your voice, O oh Lord our God, and we will speak thy truth, O oh God. We will declare thy truth, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, and that your name will be praised and exalted and lifted up high. We declare that the time for politicians, O oh Lord our God, to rule is over. In the mighty name of Jesus, we exalt the word of God over every ambition. We exalt the will of God over every ambition. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we declare that those that do not stand, oh God, with your purposes, they will not succeed. In the mighty name of Jesus, though that pretend, oh Lord, our God, and desire, oh God, through deceit, to be Guide, oh Lord our God, we declare that they will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, raise the standard, raise the standard, raise the standard, raise the standard over the nation, raise the standard over the nation, and overrule the powers of darkness, overrule the powers of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus, in the authority of the name of Jesus, that they will not prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, because you are good and you are faithful. I want us to pray for the mountain of the family. Pray for the church. Pray for the mountain of the family. We've experienced so many things. There's a lot of confusion. That is going around a lot of, of depression that is going around and killings and homicide. I want us to pray that God will visit homes. The Spirit of God will, will begin to move in homes. Instead of least hearing about death, we'll begin to hear about salvations and revivals and people being brought together in the mighty name of Jesus. Instead of hearing about separations and divorces, we are going to hear hallelujah, reconciliation messages in the name of Jesus. Let us raise the family. The Bible says for I meant them one, having a remnant of the spirit because I desired a godly generation. We declare in the name of Jesus our children will not, will not be confused by the enemy. We declare our people in the nation will not be confused. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. By the enemy, we destroy the powers of darkness, the spirit of depression that is moving over the land, bringing confusion, oh Lord our God, destroying lives. We take it captive in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord our God. We pray for peace in homes, oh God. We pray for reconciliation in homes, oh God. In marriages, oh Lord. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, the gates of hell, oh, they will not prevail, they will not prevail, they will not prevail, they will not prevail, in the mighty name of Jesus, when the spirit, when the enemy comes like a flood, raise the standard, raise the standard, raise the standard, I'm going to say, oh Lord, let him be ashamed in Jesus' name, let him be ashamed in Jesus' name, let him be salvation, let him be deliverance, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let children be delivered from alcohol. Be delivered from drugs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered from the powers of darkness. Be delivered from depression. Be delivered from demonic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Let them be delivered, oh God. We declare freedom today. Oh God, in our name, oh mighty God, all these clubs that have taken captive's minds. Oh Lord, our God, and stolen, oh family members, oh God, and stolen husbands, oh God of 
Almighty. We release a judgment against them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare, oh God, that there won't be in deliverance. That there won't be in deliverance. That there won't be in deliverance. Oh my God, my God. Hear around us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And your name will be praised. And your name will be exalted. And your name will be lifted up, oh Lord our God. May our families be delivered. May families be delivered. Oh Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those that do not know you, we pray for their salvation. We declare liberty to the captives. In the mighty name of Jesus, the powers of darkness that have been released, the powers of witchcraft and sorcery that have been released to keep men bound. Oh, we destroy them today. We crush them today. We crush them today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glorious God. Let your name be exalted. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We lay our lives before your throne. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we adore you, Lord. We lay our lives before your throne. None besides you, Lord. No other God but you, we lay our lives before your throne. None besides you, Lord. throne. And Father, we declare that our people shall live in peaceful habitation, in secure dwelling places, O oh God. That the enemy will not touch any one of us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare the grace, your grace that preserves, your grace, O oh Lord, our God, that grants us victory over our people, over our members, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in their homes, in their places of work, O oh God, in their businesses, O oh God, that they travel, as they move out, O oh God, that they walk, as they fly, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is over their lives to keep them in their going out and in their coming in and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God is good and all the time he is good. I want us to give our offering in the name of Jesus. Give, give, give cheerfully and give, give generously. Give as the Lord has revealed to you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, your offering, your tithes, the till number is provided for you on the screen. Don't give and give generously. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Even as you give. Declare that you are blessed of the Lord. Uh, your business is blessed. Your work is blessed. Whatever you do is blessed. And God will bring increase. Hallelujah. Your way. You're faithful to give. I want us to receive the man of God who's going to minister to us today. Reverend John. Come and minister in the name of Jesus. None besides you, Lord. No other God but you. We lay our lives before your throne. None besides you, Lord. None besides you, Lord. No other God but you. We lay our lives before. Thank you so much, Pastor Reverend Kyoko, plus the worship team. You've done us proud. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you for leading us well and helping us to pray. And thank you for praying for us. Thank you for praying for church. Thank you for praying for families. Thank you for helping us to pray for our businesses and what people put their hands to do. Again, we welcome every one of us to... This service on Wednesday and our prayer is that God will speak to your heart. God will speak to my heart. 
God will speak to us as we listen to his word. From the beginning of this year, we've been talking about what God has desired to give to us. And we have talked about that God has called us to walk. God has called us to, uh, to, to run. God has called us to mount up with wings like eagles. And he has said when we do that, that we will never faint. We will not be weary. For he will strengthen us. He will be with us. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Even the times of sickness and disease or in the times of being broke or losing jobs, or losing face or something wrong that has happened even in those moments God is calling us to you know to 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 mount up with wings like eagles and he says that when we wait on him that is the secret of mounting up with wings and walking and not uh, uh, and, and not fainting or running and not growing weary and he has taught us five things that we must do this year and those things he has called us to spend time with him to worship when we worship him is one way of waiting on the Lord and he has also called us to be a people of learning people who love instruction people who take instruction from his word and from those he has set aside for when he ascended he set some to be apostles and others to be pastors and he called others to evangelists and others to be teachers others to be uh, prophets and pastors and the reason that he gave these gifts to men is that we all can be trained, can be equipped, can be perfect to coming to the total image and the perfect image of Christ. And indeed, we are part of the body of Christ. And he has called us to himself. And the other thing he has called us to do, he has called us to love the sinner man. And the Around this time, we are walking on that theme of calling people to the Lord and becoming witnesses for the kingdom of God, letting people know who God is and what he can do for them. For this Wednesday and next Wednesday, we shall look at called to be witnesses. To meitwa kua mashahidi, called to be witnesses. The word call or calling appears 56 times in the Bible. And that word talks about God calling men and men calling God. If you look at that word, so it becomes a conversation between God and man. And that's what we are calling conversation. The conversation between God and man and man and God. That the man speaks to God, God speaks to man. And that conversation is a call that God has given every one of us. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, we get where God creates the entire universe and then the pinnacle or the height of his creation is man. And this man, Adam, it means that if this is mankind. So when God created Adam, he had created every other thing and he wanted a person to manage what he had created. And created this man and called him Adam. And that's where we first find that word, call. God called him, named him Adam. And Adam and Eve dwelt in the garden that God had created called, named Eden. That word call there, it's God who calls first. And then we realize as we move on that God brings all the animals to Adam. And Adam named, called them, gave them names. And whatever he called them, so they became. And one of the first things that we know that when God has called us, the first thing that he does is to identify us for a mission, for a calling, for a task, that there are things that God wants to be done. And when he calls us, or he creates us, or he identifies us and chooses us, or anoints us, he gives us the potential to do a certain task that only us can be done, can do. 
at what God has done to Adam at that moment, he sees that there is something that needs to be managed and he blesses him to manage it. And he blesses him to be a father of nations. That was one of the tasks that God wanted this man to be a procreator, the first seed that he has generated so that many men, you and I and those who have passed on and those who are going to come after us if Christ tarries, that those can from one man and that man is Adam and God called him Adam the father of all nations so when God has a task he gives those tasks to man he identify he equips he anoints he sets apart so that this task can be done. And today God has a task for you. For there is no one who comes to this world, whether you are in matatu business or you are a preacher or you are a teacher or you are a fisherman or you are a whatever career path that you have taken. God has chosen you to fulfill a certain task. They might call you father. They might call you mother. They might call you a child. They might call you a daughter or a son. They could actually call you a failure. They could call you a successful person. God has called each one of us at where we are. And he would want certain tasks to be fulfilled. And he has chosen you. He has chosen me. But that calling must be in tandem with what he has put as his principles. And we find Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 3. And if you read from verse 7, Jesus goes to a mountain and calls the disciples to himself, those he wanted to be with him, and he designated them apostles, so that they may be with him, and so that he may send them. And so the first thing that God desires when he calls us, he calls us not to do stuff. And we are, remember, we are talking about called to be witnesses. God does not call us to do, but God calls us to he is calling us to the spirit of being, not doing. He is more concerned about us. He is more concerned about our character. He is more concerned about our thought processes and our attitudes and our belief systems. And he knows nobody can change you. Nobody can change me. Nobody can change the human mind except him. And he gives us the Holy Ghost. He gives us the, his word. And he gives us the experiences to shape us and therefore the calling that God has given us is to himself first to be witnesses to become witnesses to bear witness and that word bear means to carry the weight of or the support of or the marks of so when he calls us to be witnesses he is calling us to himself so that he can train us so that he can teach us and the Bible talks about the children of Israel he called them out of Egypt and he took them to the promised land and the promised land that was a journey and the journey took a long time and God wanted to test them so that they may know man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from his mouth and what God is doing is that he is carrying them with his wings during the day there is a pillar of of cloud and at night there is a pillar of fire he's teaching them how to follow him that he leads and they follow it's not what they want what they desire no it is what he wants and Jesus says we must carry our cross and die every day die to self and we live for him and Paul says those words for me to live is Christ. Yes, he would love to live in this world. Yes, he would love to do the things that he loves to do. But Jesus says we must call, carry our crosses and follow him. So the calling to be witnesses is a call to be with Christ. Our experiences, the children of Israel was the wilderness. He is calling us in our wilderness of sickness and disease or being divorced or separated or being left by a loved one or losing a job or losing health or losing a limb, whatever it is that we find is our wilderness moment. Others is being broke and their business is going down or laid down from work 
make others is be coming the laughing stock of some people. Others is be, they're going to be called names. Others will be persecuted. And our heart goes to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan where there is trouble. And we pray that God will redeem his own. But we also praying that they will be strengthened to bear witness in the wilderness moment. And we pray that God who has called them, called us, called you, called me, called all of us, he has called us to be witnesses. That is, he has called us to bear the marks of having been with the Lord. And the Bible says in the book of Acts that when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law saw the boldness that the disciples had when they were witnessing to them, as they asked them questions, they reckoned that they had been with Jesus. And that is the first thing that God wants us to do. And as I mentioned, our topic for today and next Wednesday will be called to be witnesses. And the calling therefore, God calls us to be with him. If you look at how he called Moses, it was to take him in the wilderness and take him through the burning bush and talk to him, train him how he speaks. And then he sends him to be a witness of the power of God to Pharaoh. And God trained Moses and he gave him a rod. And that rod, he went with it to Pharaoh. Because God had spoken to him, that rod became the word of the Lord. That whenever he did something that God spoke with that rod, it came to it came to pass because he had spent his time with God in the wilderness. And as some of us, God is asking us the things that He's giving us as our experiences will become the very things that God is going to use to save or to witness to someone who may be going through what we are going through as individuals. Brothers and sisters, I would want to invite you to remember that a call to witness is a call to be. It's not a call to do. It's not a call to take a handbill or a Bible and then go and do something. It is the first calling is to be and to be with the maker who knows where he is calling. Some has been called to go to where the politicians are. Others have been called to them be on the mountain of business, in education, in media. God has called us in different places and we require different attitudes and training for us to be proper and powerful and trained and empowered witnesses in our areas of calling. You cannot go to fish with, uh, with, 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 with sausage, however much you love them. Probably they will not enjoy it. Probably they will not enjoy your rice or enjoy your hamburger. But I tell you the truth. But when God calls you to go and witness to a certain class of people, he trains you to go and witness because everyone who needs to be witnessed and those one who need to be called to the kingdom require different ways of attracting them, of talking to them, of witnessing to them. If you're a businessman, you cannot you cannot witness like you're witnessing in a Sunday school, or you're witnessing to a politician, or you're witnessing to um, to a farmer. The, 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 the approach will be different, and it's the being with the Lord that trains us on how to witness to where God. God has called us to bear the marks. Some of us have been called to be in hospital ministry and probably that's why you became unwell so that you can empathize, so that you can engage with, so that you can understand how it feels to be in hospital, how it feels to be unwell, how it feels to be rejected, how it feels to be injected with drugs that seem to work and then not to work. God has called us at different places, different experiences and those experiences become the bearing of of the marks of witness so that when you go to whoever, whoever and wherever God sends you, you will be powerful witness. And this will be the signs that shall follow them that shall go out and witness. Next week, we will look at witnesses. What does that look like? How does it look like? How should we witness? How should we engage with witnessing? Today we have looked at called to be witnesses. And we have said called is being identified. It is being chosen. It's being equipped so that 
we can be with God so that God can prepare us so that we can be witnesses too. And Jesus came to his own. He came to the Jews. He was born as a Jew. And he called many. Paul was called to the Gentiles and he had to go and learn. He had to go and engage with God in the wilderness, in the desert of Arabia. He was there for three and a half years to be trained by God. This being with Christ principle, it's a very important principle. And being with him trains us to be powerful witnesses. So next Wednesday, brothers and sisters, we shall look at called to be witnesses and we shall look at the word witness. And that witness means I saw it, I experienced it, and therefore I can tell as it were. And that's where we're going to leave our sharing for today and invite you if you have never given your life to Jesus to do so today. And being giving your life to Jesus is important. How, what does that mean? It means that you have become one with Christ. We repent of our sins and we ask Jesus to hold us from inside, change us from inside and make us new creation. Exactly what his word says. That when one is in Christ, behold, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. You could be listening and you're a backslider. I want to welcome you back to the kingdom of God so that you can become one a witness. So that you can bear witness. So that you can experience the restoration and you can be one who's sent to go and talk to someone who fell away and you can be an encouragement to them that it is possible. God is calling you back and I want to welcome you as even as you listen to this word may God of all grace may God of all comfort may God of all love receive you as you come to him as a prodigal son came and said I've sinned against God and I've sinned against you my father I pray that that shall be your prayer and also welcome those who have been Christian, they have not witnessed, they have been afraid to talk to someone in the petrol station or in the shop or in the supermarket or even in your workplace or in your sports club or in your club, wherever you go to go and do your exercises and you've been afraid as you joke to share the gospel, the reason you are not able to do it, I want to welcome you again to the principle of being with Christ because when you're with Christ, you shall receive power, you shall receive grace, you shall receive the confidence of engaging with him so that you can engage with men. For whoever identifies and spends time and be t- takes time with the Lord can stand before any man, whoever that man is. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord equip us. May the Lord help us to be his witnesses. May we find souls coming to the kingdom of God because God uses us to bring men to himself. So Heavenly Father, I pray for this one who is saying today, I want to give my life to Jesus. This other one who is saying, I'm making a comeback to the kingdom of God. I want to pray that God will receive the embrace of your love. I also want to pray for those who have been afraid to embrace the calling to witness. And I pray that God will be trained. I celebrate today those who are like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They have never and they have not doubted the power of their God. And God, you have used them in the marketplace. You have used them in the offices you have used them in their families and they have become even that pillar in their homes because they have stood to be your witnesses I thank you God for saving them from fire and I thank you for saving them from the lion's den thank you heavenly father we are celebrating those who are standing out oh God for you and saying We thank God that he saved us and they've become your witnesses. And God prepare us, even as we share your word next Wednesday, that says, yes, we can be witnesses because we've been called by Christ. We've been called for a purpose. And God trains us to be witnesses. Give us, oh God, the courage to do so. Give us the training to do so. And let us see the results, oh God. Let's see the fruit of our labor to 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold according to our patience. Thank you for hearing our prayer. This is before we ask in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you as you choose to spend time with him because that's the first calling he's calling us to. He has called us to be witnesses. In Jesus' name, God bless you. See you next Wednesday, God willing.